strong field here at the Madison Surf Club before the start of tonight's game. As is our tradition here in Madison, we'd like to acknowledge the senior members of both the football team and the cheerleading squad here in the final regular season home game for the Tigers. First off, we're going to recognize the senior members of the cheerleading squad. Under the direction of Coach Karen Williams. First, Kate Fahey. And Kate is joined here this evening by John and Diane, her parents. Karen takes the walk of fame. Congratulations, Kate. Next is Caitlin Kenny. And Caitlin is joined by her parents, Jim and Cindy. Next up is Brett Michalczyk. And she'll race down to her parents, Tom and Linda Michalczyk. I always wanted to say that name. Here's Ariana Sacco. And her dad, Peter Sacco, and a sibling. Tabitha Talmadge. Joined by her dad, Craig Talmadge. One of the co-captains of the Julian squad, Taryn Johnston. And Taryn's parents, David and Lauren Johnston. And the other co-captain is Crystal Wynan. And her parents, Jody and Carol Wynan, greet her at the end of the runway. Here's one of the Tigerettes, Jessica Hoover. Jessica joined by her dad, John Hoover. And the other Tigerette is Renee Montmany. And Renee is joined by her parents, Richard and Marsha. A big hand for the senior members of the cheerleading squad. Noisemakers are not permitted in the stadium this evening. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the senior members of the football team. Andrew Banish. Andrew joined by Tom Banish and Diane. Tim Briggs. 
Tim is joined by his father Ray and his mom Kathy and Tim Blunden. Theron Corbin. Met by Sheila Corbin. Jimmy Farmer. Met by Jim and Shelley Farmer. Fred Federico. And Freddie will be met by his parents, Fred and Adrian. Gustavo Feliciano. Goose is met by his host mom, Mary Harrison. Derek Hansen. And his parents, Glenn and Lisa Hansen. Here's Matt Izzo. And Matt is met by his dad Paul and his mom Janet. Dan Klug. Here's Danny Klug. And his parents George and Susan Klug. And John is met by his parents, Jim and Katie. There's the big Mac, Justin McLaughlin. Met by his parents, Peter and Pat McLaughlin. Seth Maslowski. Two years to get that name right. Met by Ed and Stephanie. Here's Pat Moran. Pat is met by his parents, Joe and Sheila. Steve Pelletier. And Steve is joined by his dad, Lloyd, and his mom, Janet. Dave Randolph. And Dave is joined by Jimmy and Brent. Brandon Smith. Brandon is joined by Gene Smith and Donna Galway. Tony Spinato. And Tony's met by Larry and Liz. Here's John Stewart. John is joined by his parents, Rod and Cindy. Next up is one of the captains, Sean Krieger. And Sean will be met by his parents, Bill and Betty. And co-captain, Mark Punzel. the gauntlet down to his parents, Ken and Jan. Ladies and 
and gentlemen, the football team would like to give a special thanks to Max McLeod, who's been the team manager for the past four years. Great job, Max. That's the class of 2004 for the Daniel Hand Senior Tigers. Congratulations, and it's been a great four years, guys. Thanks very much. Senior number 16, Mark Punzel. The head coach in his 15th year, Steve Philippone. the car in the parking lot and it needs to be moved immediately. The silver Saab license number 843RNE. So please move your car immediately. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, at this time we ask you to please rise and join us in honoring America. Please join the Daniel Hand Marching Band and the flag bearers from the Academy School here in Madison in the playing and singing of our national anthem.
Good evening for Madison Public Television and Daniel Hand High School Tiger Football. This is the 10th game of the season against the Hornets of Branford. We're about ready to begin. Branford will get the ball first. Steve oh, Colletier kicks it off to the left sideline. Fielded into the end zone. Touchback. Branford will take over to 20. This is Kent Sprague with Frank Tordoff. We've got Steve Fust on the camera. John Woods is here. And it's a balmy evening in strong field, about 36, 37 degrees, and about uh, 30, 30 knot, 30, 35 knot wind, Frank. Um, Just the way I like it, having grown up in Maine, you know, this would be like a good August day in Maine. And the wind is coming from west to east, so uh, Branford is going into the wind first. This is a team that's won six games, the Branford Hornets, six and three. And that's their good player there, I'm Kenny. Uh, that's an incomplete pass on the sideline, coverage by Crisco. Let me tell you, we this is a very important game for Madison Hand. It'd certainly like to, to win. Both teams would like to win this because of the division championship that could come out of something of this nature. Nobody has it wrapped up yet with only one game after this. So it's an important game that way. The Hand is playing this Craig Kenny, who's a very highly, highly touted quarterback. Uh, we talked a lot about him last year as a sophomore. Now he's a junior and a lot, very much experienced. And he's operating a quarterback, and he's going to run. And Mazlowski closes it down immediately right near the yeah, line of scrimmage. Uh, just to carry that a tad further, uh, last year uh, Kenny was about 5'10", 5'11", about 180 pounds. Right now he's rated on 195 and 6'1". So he put on size, and he's used it well this year. So Han's going to really have to work hard on the defense. And we're missing one of the outstanding young men for Han this year, Brandon Smith, who is having a, an asthma problem apparently. Going to miss him greatly. Third and ten, passing situation normally. That was a run all the way by the quarterback. He will uh, run the ball a lot, and he will throw it a lot. Now he's going to he... run this one. It's an option play. He's going to cut back, and he's going to be stopped right near the 30. That's close to a first down. And it should be where the ball hit. The ball hit in front of the chalk, but they, he there, inched it up a little if bit. If he gets it on that chalk, he's got a first down. That's right, and they inched it up on him. I saw the ball actually hit the turf. Oh. Didn't even see the flag come out. I didn't either. <laughs> flag against uh, Branford, so that play's going to come back. Yeah, it's going to be third and about 20 then. Oh, is it? Against he added just enough for that first down, but a personal foul against Branford. Well, that's a spot foul. The 15-yard penalty bring it back to the 15-yard line. Well, the spot was right at the uh, line of, I mean, not the line of scrimmage, but at the 10-yard uh, first down mark, so it, it, we're back to the 15 now. Uh, so, the end of the play. and this After team, the, one more time, Frank, this is a team that's won six ball games this year, six and three. They're a very, very good team. They've taken on some pretty tough hombres and they've beaten them. And uh, Hand's got to really come up strong. By the way, it was a first down. The personal foul was after the. Uh, after the first down, so it's first and Oh, it is ten. the first down, yeah. And it'll pass across the middle. Knocked oh. down by Tony, almost big. Oh, Marky, baby! Right in Mark. Mark was very queued up on the receiver going across in front of him. Ball actually hit him. The crossing pattern across the middle, and Mark Tony had it tracked. That wind is really, as people may remember, this has been an extremely windy couple of days here in, in uh, Connecticut, and it was supposed to die off a bit around around 4 o'clock or at sunset. Has not really happened that much. Maybe by the second quarter. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. So second and ten. It is indeed a factor tonight. And a high snap and a draw play up the middle. Nice. Nicely picked up. About a five-yard pickup. Yep. Uh, we uh, should mention again, though, on that penalty, they got the first down and then a 15-yard penalty, so it was first and 10 back at the 15. That's correct. <laughs> Must also mention again that this is a, another game that was called the Game to See by one of our uh, media outlets. Two receivers wide left. High snap, now quarterback going to run left. Fake. 
And he's across Ooh. the 25. Should have a first down there if he gets across the 25. I think so. And that will be a Brantford first down. There was a delay, quarterback delay. He faked the pitch, pitch a handoff. He took it himself, got the first down. But again, I was just saying this is the fourth time this season out of 10 games that hand has been uh, really the game to see, if you will, or the game to listen to from WELI. So uh, that's quite a thing that shows what kind of a schedule hand has. One of the toughest in the state. First down at the 27 for Branford. High oh. snap, and they have to snap it high every time. Quarterback breaks a tackle on the, in the backfield. He got away from Steve Ortz, but he brings it back up for about a three-yard gain. Showing his Ortz again today. Flushed him out of the pocket out there. Didn't quite get us. He'll be mad at himself for that, for not bringing him down. Uh, Stevie Boy was named uh, defensive player of the game last week. <laughs> and you mentioned this uh, kid Kenny for Branford. Uh, just needs a few yards to get 1,000 rushing and a few yards to get 1,000 passing, right? And it, he really, Yes, he does. It's uh, less than 100 on each one. And uh, dare say he keeps the ball so much. There and it goes. The draw Boom. Mazlowski meets that play right at the 30. Nice job by Seth Moe. Gained a uh, uh, about Mazlowski a foot, and that's it. Yeah, we also had James. Mazlowski, uh had good position, planted himself, and uh, just drove the man backwards. Oh, nice, nice job. He broke it down just right, set up on the belt buckle, and took him down. Got a little bit of help from uh, Sullivan, but uh, nice job. Who we got in the line up there? 78, is that Sullivan? Sullivan, yep. At the 31 yard line. And 90 is Orts. Looking to throw. And Bang! Hit just as he throws. Um, the incomplete pass, and that looked like Crisco blitzing from the corner. He fried him that time, right? <laughs> fried by Crisco. Nice job by Crisco coming in a, on the blind side. Quarterback just got rid of that one. He did, he but he level. felt it. He know he, he felt it that time. So it's fourth down, and they'll be kicking into the wind. And Lee is back to return. Now it's a strong wind they're kicking into. Tommy Lee back to receive. It'll be interesting to see what this ball does if he gets it up in the air. Good snap and a good kick. Good kick. And Lee feels it at about the 38. And he's trying to go to the right side. A lot of white shirts there. Still moving, however. Yes, he is, boy. Still going. Holy mackerel. They can't get him down. He's up <laughs> at about the 47. Back to the 46 yard line nice, nice job. I mean, there was an awful lot of energy expended on that particular run. And uh, Mr. Lee, Mr. Lee didn't have a lot to show for it other than about a six yard gain, maybe. But boy, there was a lot of guts in that one. Uh, looks like he filled it about 38, so he brought it to the 47. One nine yard return. Hands first possession with 8.03 left in the first quarter. And this is the first time Hands got the ball. Branford's had it one possession. Gonna go shotgun right off the bat with Punzelt Pun in the rear. Punzelt, the quarterback. Whoa! And a man offside fun. for uh, Branford on the far side. <laughs> All right, we'll take those every time, won't we? Free five. All right, remember, right? At Chase, last week, the very first play of the game, Hand got a free five as well. Getting confidence. <clears throat> Is called against the defense. Fran, uh, Frank, I was talking to a couple of people about this game. This must be tough, a tough week for a coach because uh, he knows his team can beat this team. He also knows they could lose to them. That's right. That's right. And you don't want to do that because if you can win, you get a lot of points for this. Plus, it sets you up a lot better for the division championship, which is always one of the coach's goals. Puns out looking to throw. Looking long. There's his fan. Just out of reach of... Um, uh, Eckin Road. Just inches over Eckin Road's head. Just inches. Probably affected by the wind a little bit, but the touch was there. He may come back to that play. He may. Eckin Road had a little separation from the defensive man. Well, the thing was, the middle of the field was open to it, so if you could come down and then just do an angle across the field, there was a lot of territory open back there. Second and five. Same lineup. Oh, no, not shotgun. Whoa, another one. Uh, another, another, flag. another flag. <laughs> and so, that'll get my first down. Well, I think that shows you what kind of adrenaline is working for the Branford team. They're really charged up, ready to go out there. Two five-yard penalties ought to be a first down, shouldn't it? 
that, that's a, that's a five yard penalty, a five yard gainer. Uh, goes in the record book for a penalty, but hand moves ahead. Like to see it. Down to the 44 now. We've got Randolph and um, Belmont behind uh, Punzel in the backfield for hand. Eckenrode and Schweitzer receivers to the left side. Uh oh, right into the. Punzel is uh, oh. trying to get away. Still, still going. Fumble on the play. He lose that ball. He did, didn't he? He lost it, but I think they're saying uh, that the whistle had blown. Time out. Punzel struggling for yardage there, and Bramford thinks they have it. They do. I mean, he was struggling, and, and the um, and the big number 84 came in on him and was punching at the ball. I'm not sure what that signal I is. I don't know what that one is. Oh, time maybe? Uh, we'll sort that out. <coughs> Got an inadvertent whistle. Uh, inadvertent whistle. That means it was too cold <laughs> to do anything but blow the whistle. I believe the Tigers will retain possession. Woo! Yeah, I think Maybe. they got saved on that one by the inadvertent whistle. Yeah. That the um, they were blitzing. Brantford was blitzing that time, and the rollout came to the left, and the rollout came right into the blitz. And uh, Punzel saw it, saw it there, and he had to make a quick step to the right. It went into the line, did get back to just about the line of scrimmage. The forward progress actually even gave him maybe a couple of inches, but nonetheless, he did well to get back there when he was uh, coming right into the blitz. Punzo was fighting for yardage there, and that may not have been a really smart thing to do with uh, guys trying to take the ball away from him. I'm not sure what we got here, Frank. A do-over. Do-over. Like, play yeah. the play. Play never is. happened, right? Whoa, another there's encroachment. There's another man. Uh, right another free five yards for hand. Yeah, it's been, been four four plays and three. And it's been a man on the uh, left side of the defensive line time, for yeah. Branford every time. Yeah. yeah. Encroachment is Absolutely. It'll be five yards. It'll be first and five. What is that, about three of those? That's three, yep. Yeah. Four plays and uh, four, four countable plays and three penalties. <clears throat> when you're first and five every first time, that helps. That's a, that's a little bit of a help there. You bet. Let me go back to that uh, pass to Eckenrode. Tight that's a pitch side. to Randolph, Randolph in the backfield, and Randolph oh, no. dribbles it once over there. He wow. dropped that ball on the ground, picked it right up. Dave Randolph, the ball carrier. Well, let's say the defense was ready for that one as well. He went over, and they cut inside the uh, linebacker, and there was a number of white jerseys there to meet him. That ball went on the turf, and it came right back up to Randolph. He lost a yard, but Very, he kept the ball. A fortunate bounce, you call that. Second and six. Here's a shotgun, and... Uh, Punzel's right. got a whole side here. here to get run there in. He goes. <laughs> He's going still going. Oh. Penzel to the end zone. Hi, <laughs> right, goodness. 40-yard touchdown. Belmont, Belmont threw a tremendous block down here. And, and uh, Punzel saw it happening. Saw it as it was about to take place and cut on the inside and just mowed it by all the other defenders out there. Brentford's going to learn that uh, there's more than one quarterback in this game that can run. Well, that's right, and it looks like, I mean, they, they were playing for it earlier, that one where they actually did the blitz on him. But, boy, that was excellent that time. Nice Pelletier block. Pelletier to try the point. Brand, and Banish puts it down. Kick is good. 7 to nothing. 6.40 left first quarter. You know, there's more going on tonight. <clears throat> for instance, East Haven is playing North Haven. Now, Hand will get points no matter who wins that one because they beat both teams. But East Haven has only one loss in the division. And if they they win out, they'll still be one right now in, in the division, division race. They haven't done that for a while. Back to that uh, touchdown. That was a tremendous run by Punzelt. Uh, broke a tackle, cut it back, and turned it on from 40 yards out. You know, he has gained a lot of uh, respect by everybody. Saw his, uh, his 150 plus or minus uh, yards last week running. 
and uh, as well as passing for another uh, 60 or I think uh, defensive teams are surprised at how fast he runs once he gets uh, how hard he runs how hard he is to bring down and uh, how quick he is yeah, you can't arm tackle him he's a big boy and he gets out there and really motors he also you can see he did he, he knows how to hurdle a Pelletier kicks it to the left, kicks it on the fly right to the end zone. Touchback. Man man backs into the end zone. Touchback. Touchback. Now we know that uh, Stevie Boy Pelletier, Stevie Wonder Pelletier, I guess (laughs) we can call him, you know, really really can boot that ball, but of course he does have the wind helping him this time uh, in this direction. But uh, he can get the boot down there. We've seen him do it many times without the wind. And scores first. And Branford against the wind in this first quarter, and it's a strong wind, and a gusting wind. Oh, they are operating out of a shotgun. Quarterback's going to keep run to the left, cuts it back, and a good gain, clear up across the 30. First down. First down. Taken down by fast Freddy Federico. Dove right at his legs and took him out from under him, but otherwise he'd gotten by the linebackers and the and the down linemen, so uh, about an 11-yard gain. First down for Mr. Kenny. So we've got Seth Mo, we've got uh, Steve Orts, Sullivan, and McMahon in there. That's the front four. For the front four. The quarterback going to run again, and he's going to be tackled in the yes. backfield this time. That's right. Uh, we talked a lot last week of how, how of age the front defensive line has become. And they, they showed it last week as well against the outstanding Cheshire team. We just hope they can do the same thing now. But with Brandon Smith out of there, uh, and he was doing an outstanding job right in the center there. They blitzed the linebacker on that one. Spinato was in the backfield, and um, the tackle was made over. Uh, 10 of the 31. Uh, who is 69? That's uh, McMahon. McMahon. Pete. He made the tackle. Quarterback right. looking to throw. Got plenty Look, of time. Looking to this side, okay. and the wind just the, <laughs> made that made that ball sail on him. That did look like he was trying to put a touch on it as opposed to really gunning it out there. So his man had a chance to come for it. But you could see the wind take that in a curve because, again, there wasn't any real zip on it. He was trying to do a touch throw on that. And it wasn't close to the re- uh, the receiver. Third and ten now. But he did have plenty of time. That's the other thing that we want to make note of. He had plenty of time. Third and long. Third and ten. Kenny is rolling right. Now he's looking and to throw back. And uh, got, him. got him in the backfield. Hey, Seth Moe! With a little bit of chasing out there by Stevie feeling his oats. I uh, get the impression that uh, Spinato's job is to keep an eye on number 34. He was going every place the quarterback goes. Well, that's certainly you do a man coverage on on a man that's that good out there, and that you're right. I I didn't quite pick up on that myself, but I now that you mentioned, that's looking real good. Good formation, Lee back to return. Good snap. Seth Mo, yeah, end over close. end, and he's not going to feel that one. He's going to get away from it. Die. He's going to roll dead inside the 45 at about the 43. Punt rolls dead at the 43 yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Tigers at their own 43. Well, there's two possessions. Hand has held them, and it'll be about the starting of where they did last time on their first offensive uh, crunch. And at about the same starting position, about the 44 yard line, 43. Hand leading 7 to nothing. We're at 5.07 left in the first quarter. That's Belmont with the ball. Belmont goes forward for three or four. That's a nice dive up off tackle for about four yards. Prince Albert doing a good job in there as he usually does. Again, he's really showing maturity in his running technique and uh, the he way he takes about takes five on that, didn't he? He did. Very good. Very good job. Takes the place of a penalty. Branford has three really large linemen there here in the middle of the line. Belmont again. Cross yeah. midfield. Okay, about it's the 49. Be You're making about two yards to go. Two and a half maybe. Two and a half long yards. He's following the center Izzo on that run. 
Matt the fireman is always a very strong young man. Again, doing a very good job. Has his technique down at center. They bring it in Sethmo for a double sight in the ah. set here. It's a strong run formation. You got Mark Tony on one side and uh, Seth Maslowski on the other to block. Can they expect Ooh, a high snap and feel it with one hand by Punzel and Punzel has no place to go. Punzel Yeah, something you don't see very often—a high snap like that. But uh, Pun uh, Mark did a good job. Instead of running and trying to do something where there wasn't anything, he went down on the ground. Good safe play. Fourth and uh, about eight for Han. Nizelik will punt. Brant Branton has a very quick defense. You can see the men are very quick coming off the mark. Of course, they were very quick three times to get penalties, <laughs> but look at them. They're going to put the pressure on. Nizelik oh, to now kick. They back off. Nice looks a sophomore low. Punzel is snapping. Nizelik gets it out of there. And it's going to oh, hit wait, and roll. Let's see if they can down it before it hits. Yes, the yes. They got it. Yes, they yes. They got it. They got it. About the two. <laughs> that was Pelletier getting and down there. And Punzeld right there, too. And Danny Klug, a down lineman. Two, two down linemen and then a chase man. They're all down there to down it. Nice job downing it deep in the enemy territory. Got another special happy birthday. So far, the battle of field position has been won by hand. They've kept uh, Branford on their end of the field, and uh, and they're going to start again down deep. Just the way you like to see it. Now, this is a place where the defense sure would like to see if they could put some uh, defensive well, points on the board. Slide from underneath the bleachers here in the band, so well, you get a turnover down in this territory, and you got a fairly easy score. Quarterback right up the middle. Gives and brings it across the five, about a four-yard gain. Yeah, he'll get get a little bit of breathing room down there. Very, very safe play. Took advantage of their large blocking staff in front there to just get a little bit of room for him. We're coming up to two and a half minutes left in the uh, first quarter. Handles continuing to lead seven to nothing. Ball's brought up between the six and the seven. A little operating room on from the shotgun. High snap, <laughs> and the quarterback's going to run left, cuts it back, across the 10. Close. He's near a first down. The ball carry takes it across the 10 to about the 12-yard line. That's a first down for Branford at the 12. First down. Well, you're seeing Mr. Kenny doing a very nice job in there. He faked the handoff. He's getting some uh, snaps that are a little hard to handle. Yes, he is. He's doing a good job handling yeah. them. <laughs> I mean, everyone's a challenge. Cold weather and... Uh, High snap. Looks like he's got a first baseman's mitt. He reaches up in the air and grabs that thing with it. Well, Punzel made a good play on a high snap, too. Yeah, he did. Quarterback is going to keep it. Coming this way, oh. Mozlowski meets him. The Maybe he gains a one yard. Maybe, Maybe. that's, that's a lot. By Sullivan and Mozlowski. <coughs> Gain of about two. It'll be second and eight. Well, Kenny's got some good size. Last last year, I wasn't sure he was going to have the size that would hold up. But this year, with the extra weight and probably being a lot of time in the weight room, he looks like a pretty darn good athlete out there. Well, he's close to 200 pounds. They've got him listed at, that's, right? That's right. They go again. Quarterback's going to run the left this got time, him. and then nothing there. That's very bruising, too. He's taking a pounding there. Mark Tony in on the tackle. Yeah, Tony the Tiger. Gains a yard. A yard. It'll be third and seven. Tough yard. And we're approaching one minute left in the first quarter. Third and eight. Third and eight. Watch the air. Benish is covering the motion, man. They're going to throw to the far side. Incomplete pass. Cut and drop. That'll bring up fourth down. They're going to have to punt into this win with about a half a minute left, just over a half a minute. That was a pretty good-looking play. It was almost like a screen pass, which it actually was. 
Although they didn't have any pulling linemen out there, but they did overload it with receivers. So it's really going to be a screen pass. Looked pretty good happening. Hand takes a timeout before this punt. Uh, and they're going to have to punt it into the wind when we come back. Get them to kick into the wind, that's for sure. All right, we're back after the timeout. And fourth down, uh, punter just outside the goal. Tommy Lee back at about 45. Still kicking in the wind. Hand wants them to kick into the wind. Low snap. Oh, and almost gets blocked. it out of there. And it's kicked to the far out side and bounces backwards out of bounds oh, at about man. the 33, 32. So Hand's going to have a chance for one or two plays going in this direction. Wonder if they'll try to take advantage of that. Yeah, they the, might just air it out here on this first player too. They two. might. <coughs> We've seen that it's difficult to throw into that wind. It's also a little difficult to throw with it because it's easy to overthrow. You bet. I mean, the, the wind is so strong. Depending on how you're trying to throw it, it can it can lift the ball, can knock it down, can take it sideways. A double tight end. Tight formation. Yeah, you bet. And oh, that's Belmont. Belmont going. Nice. Nice job. Across the right. Belmont. Gains of seven, maybe. 26 yard line. A nice little. About six on the play. It'll be did a nice little high step over one of the one of the knockdown blockers in there. I mean, did a good job getting out there for another extra two yards. They had uh, Steve Ortz in there as a blocking tight end on that running play. Mark Tony's five very seconds important. and running. I don't know if they'll get this one off. Mark Tony's got to be one of the biggest. There's the quarter. I was just saying, Mark Tony's got to be one of the biggest tight ends hand has ever ever thrown out there, and he's a very good athlete. Well, we have about second and three as we begin the second quarter. Hand is leading Branford seven to nothing. Uh, he hasn't been in many of the tackles yet. He hasn't had to. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> Start the second quarter. It'll be second down for the Tigers, second and four. The ball resting comfortably at the Brantford 26 yard line. Okay, here we go. Second quarter. We got John Woods on the camera for the second quarter. And Hand is going into this stiff breeze. Ball's about the oh, 25, play. flags on the play. I think that one may go against hand. And it does. That ball foul, illegal procedure, yeah. call against the Tigers. Somebody moved early there. Yards. Looked like a couple of guys That's moved early. To the -yard line. I may have to break out my glove, or uh, gloves. <laughs> do, you, do you only get your gloves out when you go skiing, is that it? Yeah. I usually try not to break them out until it's below zero, but uh, I guess it could count Celsius. <laughs> we got second and eight now. Let's hand off oh, to Belmont, and nothing. he's not right near the line of scrimmage. Now where Belmont has met the backfield Boy. for no gain. Kevin Spear, number 78 on the tackle. All right. For Bradford. So it's oh, third and right about the 30. This is really going to be four down territory down here for hand, so... I mean, you don't have to make it all back at once as long as you can get something good going, but I would suspect that we might see some play action here. I don't believe Randolph has touched the ball yet. Just once, it? yeah, well, just once. he carried it once? And it was a one-yard loss. There's Randolph there with the ball. Again. Randolph cuts it back. And he's got... And oh. he's across the uh, 25 down to Dave about Randolph 23. Maybe a yard ball. short of a maybe first down. Like I say, it's four down territory, and particularly with the Three wind facing you now. Um, fourth down will be coming up. We'll be fourth and about a yard to go. Fourth and a little over one. Last wow, week we saw a number of times well, the quarterback. No, no hesitation here. They're going to go for it on fourth, right? Punzel may just keep this one. I suspect it will come over to the right side. 
as does Brantford. And that's uh, Randolph with the ball, and Randolph's nice. got the first down to the 20. Nice. <coughs> he got the one yard for the for that and another two or three on top of it, so good job. First down. First and 10 of the 20. Good job for Davey Randolph. We played just over a minute in the second quarter, and Hand is driving the ball. And now Randolph comes over to wing, and Belmont is behind Punzel. And Randolph's Randolph. going left. He wanted to bounce it outside, but he, he didn't did. have anything there, did he? No, no he didn't. Uh, he would have had to go a little deeper. And coming on that route around, you normally uh, aren't going to have that kind of depth to go to. And he came off the wing there, down to about the 18, gained a couple. Positive yardage anyway. That's Belmont uh, carrying, takes it down to about the uh, 17. He was hit quite handily there. A couple of linebackers doing a takedown on him. I was looking at a couple of those um, defensive linemen for Branford, and uh, they're pretty good-sized boys, aren't they? Yeah, you've got, well, number 70 right in the middle is one of the co-captains. Wurtz is his name, Michael Wurtz, and he's listed 285, and he's a pretty strong-looking 285 at 6'3". Third and long. He's not just a fat kid. He's an athlete. No. Fun's out looking to throw. Now he's going to roll right, and... <laughs> He's going to try to outrun big number 70. Now and throw back out. across. Oh. Oh. oh, almost caught in the end zone. <laughs> incomplete. Punzel's pass oh. Schweitzer is incomplete. Schweitzer almost caught it, and also uh, there was a second man there that Lutz. Lutz almost got it. For the Tigers? <clears throat> yeah, almost. That's one of those a little bit too close together, and you just couldn't quite pick it off on the tip. Very close. Fourth down and six. Hand will go for it from the uh, about the 16. From the 16, yeah, you can try to kick and it would go. Come they back got three up receivers to the near side of the field. That's the short side of the field. Very overloaded to the short side. Puns out looking to throw. Now he's, he's got uh, oh! uh, an incomplete pass. That's uh, Schweitzer trying to make the catch down at about the seven. Schweitzer is incomplete. Branford gets the ball. The pass was there. The ball was there, and so is the defender. Over to Branford on downs. First for That's about right. That was just a good defensive play. Hand did everything pretty well, but the defender was right there too. Branford with the ball back. Again, pretty deep in their own territory, however, about the 17, 16, 17. They're going to try to get something razzled. They, they in the past have done some razzle-dazzle against Hand. We've seen them. And I wouldn't Shotgun be surprised. Shotgun and uh, Hand off up the middle. Nice. Met by Spinato, driven back. <laughs> that gained a yard. McMahon in it as well. Nislik from free safety came up to meet the play. Yes, the ball carrier. Takes the you course. know, we've got a lot of excellent seniors this year that are playing. You saw those during the senior senior night here. At, uh, also, Hand has got a lot of nice under, un, underclassmen coming along to follow in the tradition of the Hand, hand teams. Jim Sullivan. Sullivan and Arch are right in the middle of that line for hand. Quarterback looking to throw, looking right, looking long, and it's overthrown. Ooh. When you got that wind behind you, you, oh, yeah. you, 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 you really, get an extra five yards or so. Yeah, uh, yeah you're going to change the old Federico Kentucky windage a little bit, I would say, Ken, when you're doing that. Woo. Federico and carbon back coverage. Again, the, the type you get up there, you know, that kind of pass, you want the guy to be able to run underneath it, so you got to put a little air there, and the air just uh, adds to the wind, actually. That's what we saw again right there. So it's third and long again. Third and uh, about eight and a half. I kind of suspect this is going to get, again be a quarterback option, and he likes to run on these cases. Quarterback rolling right, rolling right, rolling right, being some pressured, pressure. and Mozlowski ah. is going to run him out of bounds. Pass. They say They're going to mark him down yes. over there. Uh, he went on a bounds before throwing yes. the pass. 
That was the pressure all the way because of Seth Mo. He chased him clear to the sideline, didn't he? He, he chased him such that he <laughs> literally forgot where he was on the field. Not a whole lot. I don't want to take that away from the quarterback too much, but, I mean, that was the pressure out there, and he was trying to make something happen. Seth Mo kept the pressure on him. The fourth and 17. So that basically is a sack. Fourth down now and about uh, 17. Punt out of the end zone. But so low snap. Gets it whoa, out of there. Seth Barely. Mo almost in on it again. Kick to the far sideline and out of bounds. Out of bounds. Yep. 40, about the 42-yard line, so Hans going to have good field position again. For the first attempt for the Tigers at the Branford 42. There may be only one score in this game, but it, most of it's been played in the right part of the field for hand at least. Now, if it's soccer, you call it having a fight uphill for the, the Branford team, but uh, the Hornets are being defended quite well by hand. First attempt for the Tigers at the 42. Eckenrode with single coverage on this side is pitched in the backfield to Randolph. He avoids a man. There's a uh -oh. flag in Hand's backfield. And this uh, play may come back. Randolph all the way to the end zone, but there's a flag line at the 45. Yeah, that's I, I'm quite sure that's going to be a the illegal block. The illegal block, yeah. Um, flag on the play. And part of it, because of the way that play was taking place. Randolph was really going to go up off guard, but he bounced to the outside, and that turned all the defenders around, and one of the hand players just laid the block the wrong way. That was a good run by Randolph, but uh, for right. not. Oh, it was. What a shame. So we're going to have first and long. Gave you a good idea of what Randolph can do, though, in the open field. He really is quick. Penalty. Takes it back to the Tiger 41 yard line. Now they got first in a first long ways. About 25 to go. I did not see the block that caused the issue, but it's a shame. Puns out. Uh, still got it. Looking to throw. There's his man. Yes. The driving catch yes. there made by uh, somebody. Yeah. Philippone. He had to lay himself out horizontal in the air. Another not. pretty good, not quite a circus catch, but pretty darn good. Make his daddy proud the down there. 15 on the play. He gained most, most of that penalty back. Uh, nice catch by uh, Philippone. Got most of it back, as you say. Nice job. Now they got a makeable situation. To, that's uh, Randolph hitting the backfield. Randolph is met by Kenny. Well, he's got good eyes, and he really makes darn good decisions as Dave Randolph. That time he was trying to bounce again to the outside, whereas the real play was really probably right up the center. And that tackle was made by the kid that's the quarterback. Yeah. Kenny plays linebacker on defense. That's asking a lot of a young man going Third both ways in those two high-pressure positions. Third and 12. Now he's got a push. Shotgun on. formation now looking oh, long on the far side. Oh, and oh, push off. No, what Schweitzer's looking for a flag, but yeah. he's not going to get it. What he is, I mean, he did get pushed off, but the receiver had turned around and he has the right to go for the ball. And the way his hands are up in the air, because they always just trying to get ready to catch it. So, defender, uh, I think, locked out on that one. And Nizelik will have to punt into the wind. Tigers. He'll kick it from about the 45. Back back deep for and it's kicked so that it'll roll. Uh, good roll. And Mark Punzel was the first man down there. He was a snapper. Rolls dead at the 10. He was closer to it than the Branford team was. Mark Punzel, quarterback on offense. He's a long snapper, and he also is the first man down on coverage yeah. on those punts. That shows you what kind of an athlete he is. 
That was an effective punt into that strong wind. Very effective. Hand just wasn't able to get going and get on track that particular possession after the uh, 15 yard penalty. We're under seven minutes left in the first half. Quarterback run right, and he's cut down near the line of scrimmage. Nice job, and that's Seth Mo. Pressure from uh, Orts. Maslowski again on the tackle. Seth Mo is doing a Don't good job. Second down. And I think the temperature just dropped a couple more degrees. I right? think so too. Well, we got about 34 now. <laughs> yeah, wind chill uh, is off the chart. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody that's staying at home, though, you're missing a great game. We'd love love to have you down here with us. First of the first half. Timeout, Brantford with 6:19 left in the first half, with Hand continuing the lead, seven to nothing. Seniors against the juniors against the Powderbrook game on Monday the 24th at the high school. Second and ten coming up for Bramford. Second and ten for Bramford. They got two receivers to the near side of the field. Kenny straight back looking he's to throw and looking long. Oh, they got he's him. cut down inside the five. Nice. That's going to be Seth Moe. Again. Seth Moe gets him. <laughs> but you know, the whole line pushed back. And the, 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 the pocket just couldn't hold up under the pressure by the hand down lineman. Seth has really been playing well in the last few games, hasn't he? Last three games have been outstanding for him, for Orts, for McMahon. Balls at the four. And, 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 you know, actually, after the game last week, I was talking to Seth a little bit uh, on the field when we were walking off, and I said, you know, it really looks like you 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 come of age and you learned a lot. And he he said, yeah. He said it really seems like it feels much more comfortable right now. Kenny From looking the end to throw zone. out of the end zone. Going deep. Long. Going deep. Corbin's got and it. Nope. Corbin's got the coverage. Incomplete pass. Incomplete. Fourth down. Coming up. Well, TC first. was watching that all the way. He had it in his sights. He also was set up well to keep his eye on the receiver. But instead of receiving it, he wanted to just he just wanted to make sure the. Uh, or instead of intercepting, you want to just make sure that that uh, Brantford didn't get it. And that was a way to do it because now they'll be kicking, although kicking with the wind, they're kicking from the end zone. Hand hasn't missed uh, blocking a punt by very much. Uh, Lee is back to return, going to kick out of the end zone. Hand did block one. A good snap. He gets it out of there quickly. That's returnable. That's to Lee. Lee feels it at about the 44. Bang. Trying to come to the right side, cuts nice it back. Job. All right. Takes it into about the 37. <laughs> Tony Spinato just laid a good lick. Very clean. The way you're taught to do it. But I'll tell you, that Branford young man has got his teeth rattling right now. <laughs> and again, hand gets the ball in very good position. That was one of those that it, when you're coming out and going to, to make a block like that, it just feels good all the way. Coach Sakula just went over and congratulated <laughs> Spinano for that block, too. One of those where you could just see it laying up, setting up properly. You, you coil down, and then you just explode into the block. Nice job. Munzel pitches it to Randolph in the backfield. Oh. Randolph trying to come to the right, slips, and uh, Kenny, loses the yard. Kenny brought him down. Dave Randolph, the ball carrier. Uh, Kenny had been playing on the far side linebacker, and this time he's on the near side linebacker. So can't quite figure out what – must be a rover, I guess. <clears throat> Where's this side again? Lost about a yard and a half on that. Every tight end this side. Try puns out looking to throw, looking, looking to the far side, and road. there's the Ecken road oh. out there. Trying to get beyond the man, incomplete. Punzel's pass intended for Ecken road is incomplete. That was into the wind, but it was a darn good pass. It was out there, it was long. Just just missed again by a couple of couple of feet. Very, very good. However, it's incomplete. Third and very long. Third and 12. Philippone split wide left and Ecken Road to the right. Look, looking for Ecken Road. Ekenrode, this, oh, out of bounds. That, that's, that one the wind took. Yeah, it kind of slipped too. It looked like it really kind of slipped off of... Uh, Mark's hand as well. And Isaac will have to punt it again. Uh, we, we've been at my, many other colder games than what we have tonight, but either way, it's not easy to hold on to that ball. 
when the weather's like this. Eyes look to kick. Back, back deep for Bradford. Corbin is the gunner on this side, and nicely gets a good kick out of there. Well, good spiral. Come on, Hand, come boy, on, get it. That came very close yeah. to hitting a Branford man. Very close. And down inside the 10. TC, inside the 10. Another good kick by Nislik. Aaron Corbin on the coverage. You, you like to see if you can get him inside and the 20 and down, and that's two good First punts for Hand tonight. That uh, punt came down right beside a Branford man <laughs> who, who was not looking at it. He was looking the other way. It could very easily have bounced off of him. Oh, that would have been an exciting turn of events, wouldn't it, huh? Right. Branford again starts deep in their own territory. Hand has had the field position, but they're only ahead seven to nothing with uh, about four and a half minutes left in the half. And it's Kenny going to run yeah. to the right side, and uh, Seth Mo. Seth Mo gets him, and Spinato yeah. just holds his ground and yep. watches the quarterback. Yep. Doesn't yep. he? He just stays back, ready to go. But Seth Moore again, he slid off his blocker, cut on the inside okay. of him. I believe he used the old swim move that time to get by the blocker. You could tell that the play was going to the right side, so Seth Moore stepped back slightly, let the blocker go in front of him, then swim move past him. Nice job taking him down. I was watching Spinato on that play. He just watched <laughs> the quarterback and uh, kind of floated over to that way, and as soon as the quarterback brought it down, he went after him. That's a draw play up the middle, and that one's not going anywhere either. No, sir. Met right at the line of scrimmage again. Boy, good, good. Tony there. there. Uh, who else we got? Castle 78, Walker. that's Sullivan. Sullivan Our was in on it, yep. Stop, along with number 78, James Sullivan. Third and ten. Third down coming up. It'll be third and eight. This is a tough defensive football game so far. Oh, it really is. And had that good run by Punzal in the beginning and has threatened a couple times. But Quarterback looking and rolling, looking to throw. Time works his throw. And, oh, after and, him. and that one should Nislik be picked. Nislik. He dropped it. Uh, uh, incomplete pass. <laughs> I thought Nislik picked him off. Incomplete. Broken up by Nislik. He did. He had it in his hands. He just didn't able to come down. Boy, that one was thrown up for grabs. Oh, it was. But what pressure that Orts had on uh, Kenny that time. Really putting the pressure on Kenny. Uh, he, he he saw his man. He had his eye on him all the time. And you got to give it to him for They're holding gonna, in. Branford will punt out of their own end zone again. Tom Lee across midfield Mr. to return. Mr. Lee. It's a good snap. All right. And a pretty good kick. Uh, and that one's going to roll. Oh, that's sure, a beautiful sure, sure. kick. He's got Tommy it. Lee goes back and, re and uh, <laughs> retrieves it, brings it back a little ways, but uh, yeah. he's going to get back to about the 34. He get, he's got five Tommy five or six of those yards eight back, eight. but they were... Eight-yard line picks up there and brings it back to the 30. Boy, sure that, that was one of those getting coach a little nervous when he picked line. it up with his back to their defensive people. That punt really had a roll on it. Oh, it did. Big time Kicked roll. Kicked that out of the, his own end zone, and it's clear down. Uh, we turned back to the, where are we spotting it, about 34? On the 34, and this, uh, it's, it's a punt that really can make a little, quite a difference as far as Branford's concerned in the field position. Branford really hasn't for the Tigers. been across midfield with the ball yet, have they? No, they haven't, and this could be very important for them if they can hold hand. Punzel still got it, looking to oh, throw. He's looking. No, he's, he's got uh, it. Oh, a nice try over there by Philippone. Can't oh. bring it in. Punzel's pass intended for Philippone is incomplete. Second down. A good try by Philippone. He yeah. left with his feet and. Uh, and he stretched out. Just stretched out to, yeah. with cold fingers. That one's a little hard to bring in. Second and ten. That's Randolph with the ball. He just bring, cuts oh, it man, back, and the ball's on the ground. And Branford recovers. Yep, yep. Just as he's going down, it just got popped out just as he goes down. So this by far is the best field position uh, Branford has had. And this is going to give him not just operating room, but, but a chance to be aggressive, I think. 
you have to be a little conservative coming out of your own end zone area. And they've got time here. A little over two and a half minutes left before the half. I think you're going to see a quarterback option and trying to pass it out to one of his key players. You're gonna, and there's the option there's side. The quarterback running to the right. And, and Seth Moe. Seth Moe after him and Nyslick. Nice Kenny again, the ball carrier. Put them on the ground. Nyslick nice and... That play was strung out very nicely and gained a yard. Yeah, that's right, because, you know, uh, Crisco had the pitch man, and he stayed with it. He stayed uh, locked in on the pitch man, caused Kenny to have to cut up inside him. And uh, that's when Seth Moe was able to catch up. Seth Moe was very, very quick, as is Orts. This Kenny must be in pretty good shape. He's playing both ways, does a lot of running with the ball. He's going to run with it again. and he's got uh, him again. Orch, got he's him. got him. <laughs> There's a flag. Uh oh, shoot. Kenny's pass is incomplete. I'm not sure Orch what the flag is. No flag on the play. Flag. Um, Orch had a hold of his shirt as he threw the wall. Yeah, but I I don't think. No, it's grounding. a. Grounding. They're calling it a grounding. An intentional grounding. Yeah. Intentional grounding is a Wow, that's heavy. Free. That's going to move the ball back and cost him a down. I'll cost them the down. A five-yard penalty and a loss of down. Yes. Steve Ortz had him by the shirt as he was he trying did. to throw that. Boy. And that's just what he did is threw it out of the way. Boy. And the from the you know, it's funny. I'm not sure that I really agree with that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why they didn't just call an incomplete or, yeah. or down there rather than uh, I mean, intentional as, grounding. As much as I like it for hand, but I just don't know that I agree with that particular call. Third and long here. Kenny looking to throw. Oh. He's going long, and going he's going to air it out long. long. Overthrown down at the uh, inside yes, the 10. Nisley and Corbin Good on the man. coverage. Well, now now we're talking field position again. They're going to be punting from about the uh, 35 or 40 yard line, and with another good punt, they could pin hand way back and have changed the total uh, the total field position situation around for at least this half. Now, of course, when the half runs out in a minute and 42 seconds, um, that wipes that out, but it's taken a whole half for them to try to see if they can get hand on the back side of the field possession situation. Lee is back down about the 15 to return this punt. High snap. Oh, gets it out of there and a boomer. Oh my goodness! He really hit that one and into the end zone. Yes, punt goes into the end zone. <laughs> he got that one up in the Ooh. jet stream and it's still rolling. I think. I think he had an afterburner on that baby, but uh, boy, hand came awful close. Seth Moore again, very very close to blocking that. We got just over a minute and a half left in the half. I would presume that hand will be pretty conservative down here at the twenty. I would assume so. Now, Han would certainly like to be able to see if they could get something going in this minute and 30, go in with a little momentum. Uh, not that they don't have it anyway, but remember, one, one TD was called back. Dave Randolph's yeah, on the penalty. Time out called by Brantford. That's Brantford's second, second time out of the half before we uh, get this possession going with a minute 33 showing. First down at the 20. And they're going to operate out of a shotgun here. Puns out rolling to the left <laughs> side, trying to get oh. by a man, gets by one, Punch but he can't get. There's, there's a flag. flag. There's, there's a flag. In yeah. backfield. Somebody came fairly close to grabbing Puns out's um, face mask. Face mask. Yeah. There, I don't know what to yes, call it. Yes, it is. That's, That's what, what they got. That's what the call was. <laughs> you could see his face, his head actually go down. I wasn't quite sure it was a face mask, but. Depending on which one it is, the inadvertent one or the uh, purpose, 5 or 15. What do we have? 5. Well. Punzel got away from one tackler, but the, the, the second one was... Uh, <laughs> man, he couldn't quite avoid. There's a very distinct look to a face mask <laughs> being hauled down on a guy. Of course, when I played, there wasn't any such thing as face masks. <laughs> didn't have to worry about <laughs> well, that. Those problem. leather helmets, you didn't need them. There's right. Road, complete oh, pass. Nice. Complete pass, first, first down. Pass to, Jimmy Eckenrode. to 36. Excellent, Excellent pass and catch. I think it caught Bradford a little bit by surprise because they uh, they didn't have a man near Eckenrode. He was wide open. Nice job by 
Punch out we're coming, the wind to get we're it. coming right up to a minute left in this uh, first half. Ball to 37. Shotgun, spread formation, four receivers. Receivers wide. abound. And He's throwing this way, Eckenrode again, yes, makes a catch, out of bounds, first down at midfield. So another 15 yards for Eckenrode. With a quick 15 and stop the clock. Again, very, very well disciplined by our young players out there. And we're inside of a minute now. Jumping Jimmy Eckenrode, outstanding basketball player. Has to work on his three-point shot a little bit, I understand. <laughs> Kind of hard to do when you're in a forward, but oh no! <laughs> the snap was made before <laughs> Punzo was ready for it, but uh, he picked it up and took it out of bounds. Holy Lost about three. Snap is fumbled and picked up by Punzo. Takes it back these to the uh, these hikes to yards. the shotgun positions and it is is quite on challenging on both 30. sides of the ball. Forty-two seconds. Yeah, he lost five seconds on that play. Second and twelve. Same formation. Four receivers out. He's going to go left. Going Punzel left. Punzel looking He's got left, and there's a Schweitzer. Schweitzer. He's got, first got a first down across the 40. 35 nice seconds. Job. Very, again, very, very good job. That's a first down for the Tigers. Boy, this wind doesn't seem and to affect Punzel much on the passing, does it? He puts that zip on the ball, and it, it goes where he wants it to go. Ryan Foder checks in the lineup for the Tigers, number seven. Ah, what we got here? Ryan Foder, the backup quarterback, is a time on the field, so we got basically two quarterbacks. You don't yeah. reckon they throw one out wide? No, no. <laughs> I don't. Long lateral and path, do you? I don't think they'd do anything Time out like hand that. before we run the uh, <laughs> first down. <laughs> Well, let's see what we do with number seven, Foder, in um, as a receiver. He's also the backup quarterback. He's one of the receivers out. They're going to load up the right side. Oh, look at Lundell this. is being pressured, <laughs> and he runs out of it. Now oh, he's, he's going deep. One. Yes. Oh. Incomplete pass. Yeah. Aim for Foder. Down at about the 12. Oh, right in his hand. That's a shame. I think that would have been his first completion. <laughs> he laid that ball right in oh, there, didn't man. he? Man, and, and what a what a scramble he had to come out with on that. That was a surprise play to me. Nice job getting Ryan out there on that. 26 seconds left. Oh, oh I would have loved to have seen that one. <laughs> Almost did it. Yeah. Ryan stays in. We got four receivers out again. Second and ten. That's Belmont back there helping block for um, Punzel. Is he? Uh, it's thrown across the middle. Oh. Com complete pass to Eckenrow down near the 20. First down. First down. 18 seconds. 18 seconds. Hands and there's a timeout. For the Tigers inside the 25 at the 22-yard line. Timeout. And a timeout called by Daniel Hand. Timeout Hand with 18 seconds showing the ball at the 22. That is their final timeout of the first half. <laughs> First and 10 for the Tigers at the 22-yard line with 18 seconds remaining in the first half of play. Okay, John, go ahead and bring it up. All right. Okay. 22 seconds left, and Hand has just used their last timeout of the half. You got Fodor and Eckenrode to the right, Philippon and Schweitzer to the left. Belmont in to block for Punzelt. Good snap. Punzelt looking for the end zone. Oh. Uh, overthrown, looking for Eckenrode. 
Pass, oh, boy, I'll Good tell you, that was close coverage on Eckenrod. Second and 10 at the 22. That was close 13 coverage. seconds, though. All right. That they still got time. They can get off another two plays. <coughs> Would really like to be able to see him put something on the board. I mean, get another touchdown can make a lot and of difference. That same you... formation. Four receivers out. Puns out looking to the right side. There's his van. Complete yes, pass. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. And it's about the 10 to Eckenrode. Six seconds. All right. All right. Six, be another first down. But now, now, Kent, you have the opportunity. Oh, got, got the to kicker. Run got the kicker coming in. Oh, they're putting him in? Or, or at least they started to. I, I'd be surprised. Yeah, yeah they here's the field goal. Right field goal, goal into the wind. Pete uh, Pelletier into attempted. Brandish for a hole. 26-yard field goal. Be put down to 16, making a 26-yard field goal try. Six Brandish seconds on the I'm clock. A, I'm just a little surprised they didn't try to run it. But nonetheless, maybe this is an opportunity to give it's a good call. snap, good hold, and He's that kick looks got it. Looks good. He's got it. It is Thank good. God. Ten to nothing. Hand leads as the uh, time Taylor. runs out in the first half. Oh, Boy, he hit that one low and hard and hooked it right around the. Uh, Goal post there, and, didn't he? And there was pressure on him coming in, too. It's a nice, disciplined job by Stevie Wonder. Well, we will take a break for the half with the Daniel Hand High School Frozen Marching Band and then back for the third quarter. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2003 Danny Hand Tiger Marching Band is under the direction of Richard Fasano. Drum majors Erica Iverson, David Steinis, Ryan Hunt, and Chrissy Keen will lead the band downfield to the Jefferson Starship Number One Smash Hit from 1985, Built This City.
recognize our senior members of the band and flag squad. Scott Bastian, trumpet. Neil Beatty, trumpet. Tony Blankstein, tuba. Abby Clawson, flag squad. Brian Collins, trumpet. Ashley DaCosta, flute. Doug Dye, trumpet. Brad Dion, trombone. Krista Dombrowski, flag squad. Heidi Eichler, flag squad. Sonia Genesis, flute. Emily Jupier, clarinet. Brady Gomad Henshaw, clarinet. Jessica Harvey, clarinet. Ryan Hunt, drum major. Erica Iverson, drum major. Courtney Jones, clarinet. Lara Kaplan, flag squad. Caitlin Kenny, flag squad captain. Tim, Tim Kramer, trumpet. Danielle Krause, flag squad captain. Sweta Mahajan, trombone. Jonathan Manning, trumpet. Ted McMahon, alto sax. Jennifer Mingus, flag squad captain. Taylor Newton, percussion. Nicole Nim, clarinet. Courtney Presti, clarinet. Michael Riley, baritone. Shauna Sardi, clarinet. Chelsea Simpkins, clarinet. David Steines, drum major. Johanna Phelan, trombone. Caitlin Weiss, trumpet. Dan Youssef, percussion. Mr. Bassano would like to thank the many parents who helped with fundraising for the band and the volunteers who worked at the concession stands throughout the season. <laughs> to close our halftime show, we've got Tiger Band and Flag Squad will perform our school fight song on Wisconsin.
And we'll get the ball first in the second half. A good defensive struggle for the first half of this game, Frank, and um, Hand was able to get that field goal through in the last play of the half to take a 10 to nothing lead. Very important the way this game is going. Uh, Hand has really dominated the uh, the field position, but you can't count on that. It's too tight a game for that, and Granford's too good at uh, a squad. Okay, it's a low kick, low hard kick, uh, returnable type. Fielded it to 15 by Randolph. Randolph still oh, dancing, my. still going. And he gets clear up to the 40. Wow. How he pulled his leg out and, and get an extra five yards, I don't know. I do not know. That was just really neat. All right, so that's pretty good starting field position, Ken. We've got to see how the hand can do. It looked pretty good as far as the offense when they are in a fairly good beat there at the end of the uh, first half of play with some passes completed, a couple of good runs. McLaughlin back in at, at the uh, center position. Mark Punzel all the way at quarterback. And he hands this one off to Belmont. Breaks a tackle. Breaks another one. He covers Come it on. up nicely. Down to the 40. Albert. Nice job. Belmont. Prince Albert took it to the stakes that time. Well, that's about a 20-yard gain. You know, very interesting. Stevie Pelletier was in on the, on the uh, pass route that time. You don't see him in there that often. On offense, very interesting. And First and ten for the Tigers at the Brantford 40. And hand comes right out with uh, three receivers to the left. Hand off to Belmont again in the backfield. Belmont gets a couple of yards there to shoe on the, Belmont with the carry on the turf. The 40. Right, Feliciano right. threw a shoe on that one. <laughs> Jose. He's in there as an offensive lineman. Gain of play, about three on the play. Three-yard gain. Seven. But Pelletier, Philippone, and Fodor as receivers on the left side. And Belmont's getting the oh, heavy-duty nice. carrying wow. here. Another nice dive right off guard. Takes it across the 35. Good job. Straight, straight forward. Bring up third and three. Justin of the piece McLaughlin doing the centering at this uh, this turn. And Sethmo is in for blocking. Sethmo, Tony, this side. Kelly's in on the tackle, this side. Big ombre. Whoa, Ooh, five somebody yards. jumped. No. And they didn't throw a flag, did they? No. Short of a first down. Just short. No now flag. This again, it's going to be gonna bring up fourth down. Fourth down territory. I'm surprised the flag didn't go, but he mustn't have crossed the line. I'll get into the neutral zone, as it were. Two yards to go for Daniel Hand. Mm. Short, short two. Ball to 32. Hand needs a couple yards here to keep the ball. Let's see. They block us this side. Belmont and Randolph behind Punzel. That's Randolph with the ball, and oh, Randolph no. is stopped. At the 30, that's going to be right a little... There. That looks like it's going to be about a foot short of a first down. If so, Branford gets the yeah, ball. Yeah, they do. Wow. Turnover on down. down. He really tried ball to do a spin right out there, but they blew it down. <clears throat> wow, that was close. Branford at their own 31. They got it down to the 30, but... Uh, I don't know. I think they should have called... Ran out of downs. To me, they should have called for a measure on that, Ken. I don't know. Pretty close, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, you look at the far side. Now, we don't quite have the angle, but... I mean, we got a 10 to nothing game here in the third quarter. Quarterback looking to throw across the middle. is tipped Cut. and oh. almost picked. Tony tipped it. Corbin <laughs> had a chance to... Um, TC. Come down with it, but couldn't get it. Incomplete. <laughs> TC Second Corbin, he's got to be kicking himself for that. He has... <laughs> He has pilfered a couple this year already, but... Uh, yeah. Mark Tony broke up the play by knocking it in the air, and that's when you get the interception. Uh, good move by Tony, getting in there, putting his hands up in the passing lanes, and uh, knocked, it, knocked it away. Shotgun uh, run to the Ball. right side, and that Ball. one's going nowhere. Nice job. Cover. Nice coverage by the hand D. Steve Ortz. On Seth Moe and Ortz in there. Feeling his Ortz again right there. <laughs> Loss 
And Brantford really hasn't been able to, to sustain much of a running game this whole game, have they? No, and they are and they're a good an running team. Yes, they're an explosive team. Now, an awful lot of their offense has come out of that one man. But he is able to deliver the ball to receivers as well. Third and low in a passing situation. Kenny's looking to throw. No, he's uh, being pursued and oh, almost that's intercepted. That's Spinato was right there. That's at least three balls that have hit hand defenders and were very pickable. Fourth down coming up for Bradford. Fourth and long. All right, now the wind is a little bit less. It may have gone from 35 down to about 30. <laughs> <laughs> and the temperature is 32 and a half. The yeah. wind chill is minus 17. Yeah, not, not quite enough. On the enough. top of the press box. Not quite enough to ice up the tears that are coming on my eyes. Punt formation, uh, Lee to return, low snap, and a um, good spiral out of there. Lee backs up to oh, the 30 to get it, and there's a, there's a block, illegal block. Oh, Lee takes the ball <coughs> zone 28, brings it back Shoot. to 35, and there's a flag yeah, on the play. It's uh, going to be a block from behind. You could see that one all the way from yeah. here. <laughs> I think you would have bottled the block, that one. The block was started, and the man turned his back, and... Uh, you got a block from behind. That, that's a piece of tape that could be held and uh, put into a training film of how not to block from behind, <laughs> unfortunately. So now let's push on. hand back a little bit, but hand will retain position. In the back is called against Daniel Hand. Should be 10 from there. <clears throat> the flag crew on the other side hustling down. Look at that. Look at those guys. Huh? I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm impressed. Well, they're they're even, just trying to keep warm. I saw yeah, them at halftime over there eating a bunch of chili, and uh, they must have gotten their energy out of that good protein in the beans. Maybe you eat too much of that chili, you'll run a lot. Well, they will run a lot. But that is good good kind of chili there. Yeah, that is good chili. You're the expert on chili there, Kent. <laughs> oh. All right, so first down from about the 21. Oh, the battle of field position. Very important again. And this is one of the poorer field positions that Hand has started from. And it's handed off to Belmont, Belmont. a big hole. And up the middle, and uh, he takes it clear up to the 40. <laughs> I'll tell you, that was a good defensive play because that's all it was, is one white jersey stuck his arm out and tripped him up. Boy, that chili looks good, huh? <laughs> A lot, a lot of uh, chili advertising going on, this, on the chili, uh, <laughs> chili circuit today. Their concession stand manned by the band parents. Uh, they get the chili from friends and company, and it's very good chili here. <laughs> it's pitched to Randolph in the backfield. Oh, Randolph dang. takes it forward oh, and Randolph flag down. Flag, the flag. Flag. Mm. flag down. I think that's going to be a block, too. Man looking down the line of scrimmage yeah. called Holy. a holding call against Hand. Talk about Shelly, just a little personal note. I have a granddaughter who's four years old, and she was telling us that her, we were up there not long ago, telling us that her mother had made shiver. Made what? Shiver. Shiver for supper. Shiver. What's, what's shiver, Kayla? Well, you know that stuff mommy makes, and the beans and stuff. Chili, in other words. <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't think of the word chili, so she used the word shiver. <laughs> Close enough. I thought that was pretty cute. <laughs> oh, well. Had to be there, I guess. It'll be okay. first and about 20. First and 20. 20 for Daniel Hand. First and 20 for Hand. Ouch. All right. Gustavo, the songster Feliciano, just came out. John Stewart, number 72, checks in the lineup for the Tigers. Stewart goes in. First down at the 32. Okay. He's looking for Tony. Looking for Tony. Oh, looking for Tony. Incomplete pass uh, off his hands. Tony is incomplete. Just a little out in front of him. And the old tight end pass Second play. Well, we've got a minute here, Frank. Uh, I want to talk a minute about something that the uh, uh, Hand football family is uh, is supporting. 
and also the Rotary Club of Madison and the Interact Club at uh, Daniel Hand High School, which is sponsored by the Rotary, and the Wharf Restaurant down at uh, um, the Wharf. Beth Cooney down there, um, they are got a spaghetti supper coming up. I'll tell you more after this play. Fun's oh. out looking to throw. No, oh, yeah. come on. How about a flag? Incomplete pass. Oh. Looking for Schweitzer on the far side. Um, they've got a, a spaghetti dinner a week from tonight. Uh, it's uh, next Friday night when there's no football game um, Good time. before Thanksgiving. Excellent time. Um, its uh, purpose is to raise funds for the uh, Walter Smith Family Education Fund. Uh, Walter Smith was a uh, father of one of the football players a couple of weeks ago. You remember young Walter that was a Absolutely. left-handed quarterback you and a bet. very good one. He's Excellent. a sophomore up at Assumption in Worcester now. Outstanding young man. And his father died rather unexpectedly in his 40s this last summer. There's a long pass looking for Eckenrode. Eckenrode uh, can't bring it in. Almost at the 35. But anyway, uh, um, the senior uh, Walter Smith died this summer and uh, they've got three kids, young Walter that uh, we've seen play football. He's got an older sister and a younger brother. And uh, um, down, with the down. Wharf and the Rotary and the Interact Club are putting on this spaghetti dinner with all the money going to the family. How uh, much is it, Ken? To the family. They're charging 10 bucks a um, head for adults and, um, and five for um, uh, kids under 10. Um, and there are three seatings for it. There's the punt down by Punzel. Uh, it's next uh, uh, Friday night, the, tw uh, the uh, uh, 21st. Uh, they'll have a seating at 5 o'clock, one at 7, one at 9. Call Beth Cooney at the wharf to make a reservation. I invited Tom uh, Banish to come up here and uh, give us a little more information on it. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about Walter Smith. You knew him better than I did, Tom. I did, Ken. Uh, actually, Walt was a Little League coach, a, a football coach, and he was a really great guy. And um, his passing was such a really tragic thing to happen to this town and to the kids on the team. Uh, Walter has three kids, his oldest son, Walt, his daughter, Lindsay, and then his youngest son, Troy, who's about 10 years old. So... Um, the, the fund will benefit their education. Walter and Lindsay are both in college at this point. And um, Troy's got a little ways to go, but uh, whatever we can do to help these family, this family would be great. Now, how do you get tickets for this, Tom? Um, if you call the wharf, talk to Beth. It's uh, 245-0005. And uh, talk to Beth Cooney or anybody else who answers. They'll give you a reservation. There's no tickets, just reservations. Just reservations. All the money of this goes to the uh, Smith family. Oh, awesome. I think a fumble on the backfield. Scramble for it. Ball is loose. This hand has got hand. that. Hand with the ball. Uh, one other thing about this uh, spaghetti dinner. Um, uh, all the money goes to the Smith uh, family. The Rotary is helping uh, sponsor it. The uh, Wharf is providing all the food free. The Interact kids at the high school, including some of the football players, will act as waiters. And any tips that they get go also into the fund. The outstanding uh, chef crew and everything yep. from uh, Wharf is Terry taking part. Wharf is planning the whole thing. All right. Very good. And what's the rest of the menu? Mm -hmm. How about it's desserts? It's any desserts? Oh, Terry's famous for her desserts. So. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, there will be desserts. <laughs> All right. So anyway, uh, come, and, come and support the uh, Walter yeah. Smith uh, family. Jeez. That's Randolph carrying the ball, and he's tough to bring down. Thanks for coming up, Tom, to tell us a little more about it. We hope uh, a lot of people will uh, support this um, Wednesday, or, uh, Friday, Friday, November 21st. Yep. Thanks and a lot for ca ca Call the wharf and tell them whether you want to come at 5, 7, or 9. Five, seven, seven, or come all three times. All three times. <laughs> all three times. Yeah. Come hungry. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Thanks a lot, guys. Okay, back to the football game. Um, Punzelt hands it off to Belmont, and he is hit by big number 70 there, it looks like. Now, this possession, again, is taken over because of the uh, fumble recovery, and it was a true takeaway by hand. It looked to me like uh, number 44 for Brantford had actually fallen on the ball when it's uh, skipped out of Kenny's hands, and one of the hand players actually dove in and did a real snatch away on it, did not see who it was. But Hand has got the ball down to about the 38. Punzel still got it, rolling left. Now he's going to have to unload. Oh, he and, slips. Uh, intercepted. Uh, it's intercepted down about the 16. Punzel's pass is intercepted. 
A linebacker was right in on Punzel. He had to unload. It's too bad. Belmont was wide open in the flat, but uh, Mark was looking deep all the way down there, and he just couldn't get anything on it as he was slipping. And uh, a very good, very good catch right off the grass by uh, Branford. So that was third down and long, long. So it would have ended up being fourth and probably punnable. So almost the same effect with one less play. Well, we're back to the old game, though. They're playing it down in uh, Branford's end of the field yep. so far. Kenny rolls to the left because they've been chasing him. Kenny is going to run it, and, and he, he is nail him. nailed down at about the 19. Here. Okay. He's got about three yards on that, but those were tough yards because uh, McMahon was right there and was the one who was really uh, stringing him out and came right in on him, did a nice job. A little help from Banish, Handy Andy. Bring up second down and uh, close to seven. Ball to 19, second and seven. Branford, two receivers to the right, the wide side of the field, and Kenny is uh, option right. Run to the right, and Nizelik is trying to run him down, and he does at about the 25. It's going to be third and very the short. Play. That's what Kenny is particularly good at, is that option. Steve Tucker of the ball carrier. We've seen him work a lot at that <laughs> tonight. The 25 yard he was line. looking for those 68 yards uh, to make 1,000. I don't Nizelik think he's anywhere near Courtney that because he's in. been thrown a few times for losses, but... He is an outstanding athlete, as you can see. Very quick, big, and not easy to bring down. Third and one. They third need a down. yard to keep the drive going. I wouldn't be surprised to see a quarterback sneak. Or yeah, there and that's is. the quarterback keeps, and he you meet him. That was he Spinato. gets a yard. Again, as you were saying, Spinato was really uh, shadowing him, and there just wasn't enough time to get in and stop him short uh, with only the one yard to go. Seven yard line, first and ten. For the Hornets. First down at the 27. Coming up to four minutes left in this third quarter. It's rolled right along so far and still a defensive struggle. You bet it is. Quarterback in the shotgun. Hands it off coming this way. He's got a little opening and Corbin comes up to meet it. Basically a solo tackle by Tucker Corbin. He hit him a little bit too high Stop for right what Corbin. you'd normally like to see, but he was able to wrestle him down after a three-yard gain. Four-yard gain. Four second and six. Four-yard gain to the 31. Okay. We'll make sure that that guy's going off the field on the far side. <laughs> Still expects yeah, Quarterback's going to keep. And he goes Kenny forward to about 35. Fakes the hand off and just keeps it and goes forward. And McMahon actually got him and started slowing him. He just he actually stopped him in his tracks when McMahon got him, but he stretched forward for the extra two yards. So third and again short, Kent. Same situation, basically. Another third and one. Last time they ran the old quarterback keep. Another quarterback. Got him. Kenny, the ball carrier. I don't Kenny think so. He dives across. He didn't get much. Uh, I mean, it's supposed to be where the he ball need, goes down to the, the yard. Game, whatever hits first. Thirty-seven. They shouldn't give him a spot for that because the hand yeah. did meet him very well, right in front. Well, they may measure Sullivan. We're gonna measure. This, I still think that back along they should have measured that one of hands, but it didn't happen. So. This should be short in my estimation, but again, we don't have quite the angle. You get those calibrated eyeballs here. It's gonna be very close either way here. Yes, it is. And what is Brantford to do either way? It's, it's about short. Look at that. three inches short. Short yeah. five <laughs> inches. It'll be fourth. <laughs> what does Brantford do? Well, they're 10 I points think, behind. And, yeah, I think they got to keep it and go for it. We're down near the end of the third quarter. I think they got to go for it. Hand doesn't think they're going to punt. And Brentford doesn't act like they're going to punt. 
Okay. Again, you're Quarter, normally going to think you keep her again. Give me a He's their best runner too. They're laying right in on the on the on the uh, guard. And closes the gaps a little and bit in the middle up. there. Spinato is man. right there. And oh, boy, he didn't, hey, didn't get much there. No. He near the line of scrimmage. Didn't look like he got a clean hand off there, did he? No, or he a clean uh, snap. The last two sneaks they tried to do to the they did do to the left side. That time we tried to take it right. McMahon was, on a stop along with Sullivan. McMahon on, on the stop and I think he lost a, about six inches. But I should. I think hand got They're the gonna measure it again, but another measurement coming <coughs> Boy. <laughs> it's just about the same place it was the last time, yeah, wasn't it? It was, but I tell you, I thought Pan did get the penetration, and it's really the way the referee saw it. And if this is short, Hand gets the ball. And it's going to be short. Yes. And the ball goes over Pushed him back by about down. four or five more inches. <laughs> they lost about six inches there, right? Yeah, you got it. You got a nice, nice job by the Hand D. Yeah, that was. Uh, Again, Orts and McMahon just closed it right up. And, and uh, 37. Not, just enough uh, distraction to the center, so it wasn't quite a clean take home, I think. We've got just over two and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Hand leading 10 to nothing. Just got the ball back on downs. Whoops. Plenzel pitches to Randolph coming this way. Randolph gets some yards. Yeah, it's good. You got about five or six on that. It looks it's a lot more than it looked. At first, it looked like it's maybe a four-yard gain, but I think he's got closer to six on that. Yeah, yeah a little over five. Block, takes it across the 35 down to the 32. They were, five will be second and five. Yeah. They're running out of that wing position, aren't yes. they? A little more this yeah, year. They really are. We, this is the first year we've really seen much of this new little wrinkle for him. Instead of the straight eye, that they, now they're going it's the other way, and Randolph oh, cuts it back, and he's got a hole. Oh, he's got a that. big hole. Now he's he heading, his heart. Look oh, a juke, and uh, he's heading for the end zone. He can't quite get there. Four-yard line. Hey, that's, that's artistic right there. <laughs> I think he must have been taking ballet lessons or something in the offseason. Honest to be. First goal for the Tigers. I mean, honest to Dave, I guess you got to say. Man, he, uh, as they say, uh, Left some of his athletic gear behind on the defensive oh, man there. My goodness, uh, several defensive men. <laughs> right out of the first uh, and goal stations. at about the four. Puns oh, out, hands Belmont, it off to Belmont, right. going straight forward. Belmont carries down. Gains a yard, maybe. No, nope. but the two. two. Yeah. Second and goal at the two. <laughs> It's a shame Randolph couldn't, uh, he had to slow down to juke at one man, and then he had two more closing in on him. Oh, boy, oh, boy, that's one of those. I mean, it really, if you're the defender and you get juke like that, it's just an awful feeling. But well, what a great one to see from our standpoint. Okay. Second and goal, pitch to uh, nope, nope, he's Randolph, and he's going to lose a yard. Yeah, going to lose yardage. And we're going to come up hey, to about a minute left after that play. In the third quarter. Branford is defending that particular play very well, I think. And uh, I, I forever, I, I really always wonder why you don't take a fast man and try to run him to the long, the wide side of the field. You know where you can, he can use his foot speed. We well, got two receivers to the left. That's the wide side. Punzel will keep it. Punzel is going to roll there, and, and he's, he's going to nope. take it himself. Now he's going to unload. Got, oh. Just out of reach uh, and in the corner of the end zone, look, looking for uh, Eckenrode. It'll be fourth down coming up. Fourth down coming up. Field goal doesn't get him much here, does it? Doesn't get a whole lot, but, you know, if you try to run a play and get the touchdown super, You've only got five yards to try to get it in there. If you don't get it, then yes, it's been a defensive stop for Branford, but they're deep in uh, their own territory. Fourth and goal. It's inside the five, and they will go for it here. And I would still suspect that you might see Punzel try to take it in. Branford's defense has been very good. They're loading up the left side. Yeah. They're going to roll left. And now he's going to oh, throw left, and it. it's complete pass. Philip Bone in the end zone. Touchdown. You know, very excellently done. Philip Bone stayed very slow, so the defender was behind him and left enough room for Punzel to get it out in front of him, and then he mowed it out to get it. 
Nicely done. Nice timing by both players. Philippon uh, did an excellent job of uh, shielding the defensive man. He had him on his hip behind him. Yep. And uh, f- pass was thrown out in front of him. There's no way the defender could get there. Here's the try for the extra point. Good snap. Put down by Banish. Kicked up by Pelletier. Right. Good. Seventeen to nothing. Thirty-four oh. seconds left, third quarter. Took a long time to get there. There was no scoring during this third period until right then. But boy, uh, very nicely done by hand, and you you really feel a little bit better with that score on the board, Ken. Branford now needs three scores, and we're about done with the third quarter. Four seconds remaining here in the third quarter of play. The score, Daniel Hand, 17, Brantford, nothing. Deep Pelletier will kick off for Daniel Hand. Are you up? We're ready to kick off. We got Corbin and Banish, the two outside cover men, and Nislik is following the kicker. He's oh, the safety. That's a into the wind. short, high one. It's going to hit and bounce. Feel it by one of the up men and cut back and taken down at about the 30. Ball fielded at the 20 yard line. All right, by good job. 33. All right. James Anorio. Looked like a pretty good tackle by uh, Matt Gordon out there. Came down, Matt's a, 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 a junior, excuse me. Did a good job coming down there and helping take Marvin him down. Marvin Walker, number 10, was also Walker in on that tackle. Off. Yes, sir. Good job by both young men on that kamikaze squad. Ball just at the 30. 28 seconds left in the third quarter. Yes, pass sir. out this way. A man wide open, complete pass. And uh, now he turns it upfield and tackled by Corbin. Complete, clear down to the 47. Out of yeah. bounds. Yeah, that, that is maybe the first first completed pass by Kenny for the night. But not before the first down is achieved. But they do get the first down. Uh, Han, you could tell that they were going to try to unload a little bit that way. Han did put pressure on Kenny. He did sidestep the pressure and came off to the left. And it was a wide open player. A little bit too got much. got 20 seconds left to go with the wind here. They may go, go long. Kenny rolling right, looking to throw, oh, being pursued by Orts, and Orts cannot get him. Uh, it's almost <laughs> intercepted on the far oh, side. Goodness. Yeah, 22. Up. That was nice job by Davis, Andy. Is that Andy, who that is, uh, 22? Andy, Andy. Andy, Andy, Andy loves to steal those things away, and he almost grabbed another one. Uh, he wears about three different numbers. I never know what he's I wearing know, tonight. Yes. You would call it, I'd have called Andy the chameleon, maybe, huh? If he'd have been a split second later, that would have been complete. If he'd have been a split second earlier, he'd had an in- interception. You betcha. And he did take one in for, what, 45, 50, no, about 55 yarder earlier in the season. Kenny right is going to throw point. about every play. And now he's going down the field, uh, incomplete, overthrown. Nicely can Federico with the coverage. Or Castellan is incomplete. Seven seconds third left down. in the third quarter. Third and ten. They're going to keep on trying to do that. They're going to roll him out, try to give him some time. And Hand is really st- trying to do some good defense. Again, it's the front line. We haven't seen it most of the time. It's not a uh, not a blitz or a, that from a corner or, or linebacker. It's just the front four guys are getting in there. Putting the pressure on. Third and ten, another shotgun. Kenny looking to throw. Rolling right, being pursued now. Oh, He's nice. going to lay that one up. Oh, it's oh, complete on the far side. Oh, well short of a first down. It wasn't really a Harold Mary that, that, Mary that, stretch, but boy, it was that, like one. That runs out the uh, third quarter, and so if uh, Branford punts, they'll have to punt into the wind now. Well, again, Hand had some very heavy pressure on. Again, it's the front four of Hand. Well, I thought he threw that one up for grabs, but he did have a receiver out there. Yeah, and, and Hand had given a big cushion out on that receiver. You know, the old prevent type of defense was out there, so 
It was he was wide open. There's no question, but took a lot to get the ball out there. With the fourth down play coming up, we'll go to quarter number four. Up for Fourth down play coming up. Bramford and punt formation hand isn't sure they're going to no, buy no. into the punt. They get their normal defense in. Yep. Nislik is uh, not very deep. They are going to kick it. And they're going to let it roll. Try to get field. It'll roll it? dead about the 15, about the 17. Okay. That's what they, they're going to try to turn the field position back against hand now, and that's just what they did then. 17. But you're right, in a short field like that, reminder, it would have been hard to field that by, <laughs> by a Tommy Lee anyway, because he would have had to go a long ways Wednesday, for the ball. Now, I do want to remind everybody, Thanksgiving Day game, the game is at uh, Guilford this year. Guaranteed warm weather. 10.30 <laughs> in the morning game. 10.30, you're right. That's Belmont with a big hole. Belmont is still going. Makes a spin and takes it across the 35. All right. Albert Belmont across the 35 to the 36 yards. That's 17 or 18 yards. Nice, nice carry by. Oh, he got a flag down. Oh. I did not see the flag thrown, but apparently no, it's against not. hand. Illegal block. Son of a gun. That hole opened up nicely for Belmont. <laughs> Maybe because <laughs> why the flag came up. <laughs> that might have been the reason, huh? Preliminary call oh, against block. Daniel Hand. Expression blocking below the waist. There you go. Okay. I don't like chop blocks. Blocking below the waist. Can you explain that rule, Frank? No, not real well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyhow, it takes hand clear back to about the 12. Well, they get first down over. Make it a little more exciting. They have the distance penalty takes it back to the 12 yard line. First and 16. Mundell hands it off to uh, Randolph going to the right and uh, almost gets away from the man there. Oh, 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 flag Another flag down. Uh, that one's against that one's against Bramford. Personal foul. Personal foul against Bramford. Uh, I didn't see the uh, infraction, but it was right as a tackle was being made. Now we had been remarking in one of the other games of how light the penalties have been as a whole, uh, particularly in hand team themselves. Flags in this game, I think, this, this year for combined flags. Takes it out to the Tiger. Always seems to be a fair number of flags against the East Haven team. We saw that this year. That gets hand out of the hole at the 28 with a first down. We're having trouble getting this first minute played to the fourth quarter. Yes. And that one's handed off to Belmont. Got a little hole, crosses the 30. The ball carrier across the 30. A couple of tough yards on that one right in the center of the field. Stopped by Tommy Steve Lee Tucker. going in. Out comes Randolph, very interesting. Gain of about two on the play, second and eight. Make it three, second and seven. Got, Needs uh, a little over seven yards for first. Looks like Matt Izzo back in at center. 
That one's pitched Pitch to Lee. Lee. That's Lee carrying the ball. Still going. That's Tommy Lee. Nice hey, job, Mr. He's, Lee. Mr. Lee. He's, he's close to our first down. He really is. And, again, he ran into a bevy of white jerseys in there that time that were a lot bigger than him. I mean, I think he could fit in the hip pocket of several of those guys out there. I think maybe they're going to measure this one, aren't they? Yeah, it's right there. First down. Right. They're going to give it to him. First down. Tommy Lee with that last little surge got the first down. Good job by Tommy. <laughs> what hand would like here is about a seven or eight minute drive and a score at the end of it. Oh, oh, a 10 minute and 15 second drive. Whoa. Lee run, barely got to the line run to the right by Lee, not much there. Gain less than stays, one. John Marcus stays fat, so just about line of screw. Randolph in, nicely goes in. Got everybody in tight for blocking. It's really going to expect him to just stay on the ground. That's Randolph with the ball. And Randolph does a spin. Gains the yard, and that's it. Well, you know, just like you and I know, the hand is not going to go to the air and do anything drastic unless they have to. That was a definite run situation right there. And so Brantford brought everybody, what they call, right into the box. I mean, actually, actually had all 11 players in the box. And hand substitutes five players there. They got their receiving car back in. And we're certainly, as you say, like to be able to get a first down. Be a Third heavy, and eight. Heavy pressure. Pass situation. Puns out. The, oh, oh, uh, oh. Throws it to Lee. Incomplete pass. Puns out pass for Tiny Lee is incomplete. Lee was hit just as he tried to catch that ball. Yeah. He, he really didn't have his feet planted in any way, shape, or manner to really do a good catch on that baby. I mean, it would have just been finessed if he had. Punzel was being rushed from the blind side. Yeah. He didn't have much time. With a quick pass to the flat, nice like well punt. Got the wind behind him, but the wind has died down a bit. Very much so. Flag is almost down flat. Low snap. Nice oh, like nice booms it out of there. Fair catch called at the 25. Fair catch is called for and held by nice kick. Nice, nice Adam kick. Hacklin. It'll be first to 10 for Brantford at their own 25 yard line. So we got 8.46 showing on the clock in the fourth quarter. Hand is leading 17 to nothing against the Hornets of Brantford. This is the 10th game of the season. Hand comes in 7 and 2. If they can win this game. They're in good shape to be in a playoff position for the championship. Yeah, very good shape because yeah, if they lose this game, uh, then it depends on what other people do. Yeah, they're not dead in the water, but you really don't want to because this is the game to win. And the quarterback keeps going left, got some room to run. He gains about six or seven. Brought down by TC. TC to, uh, with a solo tackle again. That time Kenny came in and put his helmet right in TC's belly, but uh, TC held on and just dragged him down. Give him seven, seven yards. Seven on the play, it'll be second and three. Ball to 33. Kenny will keep it again. Nope, he hands it off. off this way and tackled in the backfield. Nice. First man there for uh, hand. Seth Mo. Steve Tucker, the ball carrier, stopped in the back. Uh, Seth Mo was there. Chris sure was, was there. I think it was Sullivan. Might have been the first guy. Oh, really? Yeah. Somebody met him right behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, no gain. Sullivan's doing a great job in there, filling in for uh, the ill Brandon Smith. Third down quarterback going to keep going left. Got the first down. Yeah, gets the first down. About the 38. Kenny, the ball carrier, takes it across the 35 to the 38 yard line. And that is a Brantford first down. You know, down. Sullivan's a good sized young man. He's a junior as well. He's six foot, 210 pounds, getting some good, good experience. 
love to see that right now. Branford is playing ground and grinded out football, but they need three scores against him. You know, Seth Moe's a senior, and Orch is a junior. Is, all right, pressure. Kenny looking to throw. Seth Moe's got to contain. Seth Moe chasing him and uh, oh. out of bounds. Kenny's out, of bounds. out of bounds. Seth Moe had Kenny's a hold of the quarterback as he unloaded. Seth a little bit of a loss on the play, too, I believe. It'll be second and 10 for Ranford at their 38. Seth Moe gave the quarterback no place to go there except out of bounds. Yeah, no, that's true. You know, I just was noticing, too, I, you know, we, we talked a lot about the four down linemen, and Seth Moe is the only senior among them right now. So that, that bodes well. He is well. out there right now, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. Uh, of course, Sean Krieger played a defensive line position yeah. and he's been hurt for most of the season and that's a shame he's one of the captains oh, and yeah you hate to see that senior fullback year. and defensive lineman and they're going to throw across the middle uh, it's a complete pass knocked down Kenny's by federico complete. at the 50. first down off first down boy i'll tell you again federico kenny stayed back there yeah, good discipline on his part first down stayed back in the pocket and has waited line. it out Brantford. Got to the 49, cross midfield, and we just hit the seven-minute mark in the fourth quarter. We're putting on a little bit of a drive is what uh, is what's going on with Brantford right now. And the quarterback looking to throw, rolling left. Now he's unloading long. That's going to be overthrown. Ooh. Almost, <laughs> almost down where Corbin could reach it. Yeah. Oh, hey, there's two opportunities for uh, TC. Second and ten at the Tiger He's out there on the Andrew on the Banish had the inside coverage and Carbon was by, behind him. <laughs> Second and ten to forty nine. Quarterback looking left, throwing left, and it bounced in, incomplete. Crisco had the coverage. Tried to do a bounce pass. That's only good in basketball, though, right? Yeah, that's that's one of those uh, short hops to the to the shortstop. <laughs> that's good play in, in baseball. All right. Third and ten. And Brentford has had a tough time mounting much offense against this hand defense tonight. This is a sustained this drive coming back about uh, with three or four first downs in this time. Kenny looking to throw, Orts pursuing, and uh, quarterback is running and he got crunched, but he's near a first down. And very much in a prevent defense again, but they had good coverage downfield. Spinato in on the tackle. That gives them a first down at the 39. And Sullivan was the only man that got back there and put pressure on him. Kenny was able to bob by him and gave him some pretty good momentum capability. Well, they've taken it down to the 39. Where'd they start this? They started it back around the 25, wasn't it? Something like that. Yeah, that's right. It was down punt. Was safe, um, fair catch on the 25. And Kenny rolling left. They run the trouble. Contain there, and he <laughs> oh, is nice. thrown down. Nice. Pete McMahon. Pete McMahon. Oh, McMahon nice brings him down. That's a long. real of a good feeling. Now keep, you got to keep your momentum the into the game. Second keep your attention on the game. That's a great oh, one to build the adrenaline up, but you got to keep that going up and down field. A timeout on the field. Timeout is called by Branford. Timeout, Branford. Second half. With 5:49 left in this game, it'll bring up second and about uh, what do we got? 17, maybe 18. They're about eight, 17 anyway. We'll yeah. take a break. After that, sack by McMahon and a timeout by Branford brings up second and about 17. Ball back at the 47. All right, again. Kenny will take it and try to find somebody to air it out to. He's going to throw long. He's got long. He's Can he get it in the down there? Yes. And the defender is also there. Nice try. That's Corbin. Nice Good coverage by Corbin and um, Crisco up. Kid. By Theron Corbin. And and third, nice look deep in the safety back the there as a backup, but it was TC and uh, Crisco. 
third and 17. Look for another pass. Absolutely, third down. Two receivers to the far side, one to this side. And that's the quarterback running, keeping the ball, and he's tackled, wrapped up. Man, alive. That was uh, Spanato. Both arms around his ankles. That, shit. that was again the shadow. The shadow, no. Fourth down, coming up. 4.59, showing on the clock, leading 17 to nothing. Now, Hen will be content to use a lot of clock. Oh, that play was on, was kind of ugly. Very ugly. Very, very ugly. That one surprised everybody. Either Matt Izzo was the only one who knew the snap counter or the only one who didn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, and Matt, he was... Uh... You know, he's a military type guy. <laughs> he does it by the numbers anyway. Hut two. All right. First and 15 now. I don't know what all the discussion was, why you wouldn't have taken the. They're still operating out of the shotgun. Yes. Oh, oh my goodness gracious. Funds out and uh, gets a hand on it, recovers it, but it'll a big loss. Notice who was coming in on the blitz. Yeah. That was Kenny coming in on the blitz. They've got him basically one on one with uh, Punzel. Been doing that all night. He is fast. He is able to get in there on him. And uh, we got second and about a quarter of a mile now. Second and about 27. Now we might have him just where we want him. Ken. <laughs> that last year, if you remember the. The uh, Charmers pass with about, it was fourth down and 50 yards. <laughs> Punzel's going to have to take a timeout to get it sorted out here. We got a break in the action with 4.16 showing on the clock. Hand is second down and something in the neighborhood of 30 yards to go. And they're leading 17 to nothing against the Branford Hornets, but it isn't quite over yet, Frank. No, and if we can, if we do maintain the score, at least with hand on the plus side, we intend to get down on the field to do some interviews of the young men being senior night. We'll see who we can get together, but I would like to introduce everybody to the, the four linemen we've been talking so much about. But that is, as long as we can maintain the... Uh, position in the scoreboard the way are available now. and while we have a break in the action uh, one more reminder that uh, the Walter E. Smith uh, Family Education Fund Spaghetti Dinner is next week at the Wharf Friday night 21st call the Wharf for reservations they got seatings at 5, 7, and 9 p.m. Sounds like a really neat and fun thing to do. Here, Penzo's going to keep coming this way. Got a break. <laughs> got a big hole. Brings it up to the 39. Yeah, you got about half of it back anyway. 40-yard line at the 39. Nice job. Good hole in the center. The main thing that accomplished is it's going to let the clock run inside of uh, four minutes. Third and about 15 now. I think Candle just keep on the... Uh, Keep a run, and that's what uh, they expect as well. Actually, this time you got eight men in the box. Punzel looking to throw, rolling right. Now he's going to throw it. Oh, a little bit behind his receiver out there, Lutz. Clock stops. Be fourth down. Hand will punt it away. Mike Lutz was the intended receiver, but Punzel throwing on the run, put it a little behind him, and the hand will punt. Nicely can to punt. Done a very good job of punting uh, coming in for Jim Farmer when Farmer got hurt. Very good, and of course, nice looks and a he's big He's a boy. sophomore, right? He's a sophomore big. He's been doing a great job as safety as well for and Farmer. They're a, they're a pretty good kick. Nice kick. High That's kick. Ball and the ball. He touched did, did he it. touch it? He did touch it. I'm quite sure he did. Put it in. Pick it up. Pick it. Uh, are they going to call that? 
Oh, uh, they said he didn't, but man, I can't <laughs> touch that sucker. Uh, well, it came awful close to touch, being touched by a Brantford man. Down at the five. Excellent kick by Nice. Oh, it really was. Like we were just saying, he's really doing a great job. He's, a, he's done a great job filling in for Farmer, both in the kicking and the safety position back there. He's only a sophomore. I'm sure they'll end up getting him to punting camp or something during the summertime. Very, very good. Again, Branford starts deep in their own uh, end of the field. Quarterback rolling and going to left. And that's not going to get it for him. Let's the clock run. That's he gains right. a couple yards. Clock keeps on at 312. Gains about three. <clears throat> Second down and seven for Branford. Quarterback into the end zone, looking to throw out of there. Hey, now he's being pressured. Oh. oh, he jukes a man. And there are a lot of black shirts close in on him at the 20. Gets a, gets a first down, gets however. The first down out of it, yep. But he was flush in the pocket. That's not, he didn't want to run the ball. He wanted to get it downfield in a pass, but he did flush him out. And now there are no huddle offense. Quick snap, looking left, throwing left. Oh. And Oh, that was Crisco that nice was man. right there. <laughs> Second down coming up. Incomplete pass on the left flat. We're at two and a half minutes left in this game. And Hans defense has come up big against Branford tonight. He's got 17 points from the offense, but their defense so far has shut Branford down. They've done a fabulous job all season long. And they and shut down Cheshire last week. A very high-powered offensive teams have uh, taken a back seat to hand. The only one that really got away was... Kenny looking to throw down the middle. Oh, oh there's a man. Good. No. An incomplete pass in and out of his hands. Oh. Nislik, Crisco, Corbin all back there. For Tucker. Well, that really should have Nislick been a reception on that one, boy. That was laid up there. He didn't have any pressure on him, but... A little high. I'll tell you. Third and ten at the twenty. Yeah, the only one that really got away was the West Haven team, and now they're number what four in the state. So, <coughs> got to give him a little bit uh, on that. They gave them all they wanted. We with, gave uh, West Haven all they wanted. The only game that they really got beat by was Shelton. Shelton, and that was remember when we had a couple of our young men, a couple of our starters, and a couple of guys we used a lot. Their names a lot in this game. Kenny throwing across the middle, incomplete pass, overthrown. I'm not Chris sure that those two young men would have, you know, the two starters that were out because of disciplinary reasons would have gotten, been the difference in that game. It would have made, you know, may have made some difference, but I'm not sure it would have made the whole difference. Well, they say you're never as bad as you look when you lose and never as good as you look when you win sometimes. Punt formation, fourth and ten. Tommy Lee back at midfield to return. We're at 2.20 on the clock. And good kick. That's uh, oh, Lee. Oh, Lee oh, <laughs> fumbles it. It's on the ground. There's a lot of white shirts there. And loose. I would think Branford probably recovered that I one. I think so. Tommy Lee tried to feel it on the on the run. <laughs> We've got a referee pointing in each direction there, Frank. Which way are we going to point? They're going to give it to Branford. Branford on the fumble recovery. Branford with the ball back at the 41. I'm sure Tommy will hear about that. <laughs> so Branford's not quite done yet. 2.10 on the clock. There, Kenny is looking to throw, and he's pressured down the backfield, Ball's and down. he loses the ball. Ball's down. He gets it back, I think. Fumble on the play. <laughs> Henry Oh, ho, ho. Sully. Uh, I think that was McMahon that actually had a hold of the quarterback. Yes, yes it was. McMahon was the one that really called, caused the ball to go out, and Sullivan was. <clears throat> so that's a really another good sign is the two down line on defense were both in on the pressure of the quarterback. 
So that about wraps it up for friend, for Hand with 2.04 on the clock. They get the ball back at the 27. They should need one first down. I mean, to get one first down to finish the clock off. Well, with last week's win, they equal last season's I guess career so. or their season win was seven. Tonight we'll make it eight this year. Now we can start talking about positives because it looks like it is going to end up very well for the Hand Tigers. With a win like this, you get a lot of points in the state state tournament structure. Remember, four teams will make it. Hand right now is ranked number three of the four. And, and when you beat a team that's won six games, that yes, helps your points. You'll get the 100 points for the win. You get the 10 points for every one of their wins. <laughs> so there's another 60. And then depends on who else you play now. Punzel takes the knee and about fall down to it. Branford calls a timeout. We got a 120 showing on the clock. In, inside of a minute and uh, we will wrap it up pretty quickly as soon as this game is over uh, Frank uh, is going to go down on the field and interview a few of the players particularly some of the seniors Frank yeah, we'll uh, get some of the seniors I also want to get uh, this was senior night yeah Try to catch the captains again see what the captains are planning over the next uh, week and a half before the Guilford game on Turkey Day and Nislik's going to punt it on fourth down. I want to thank you all of your fans for a great season, especially those of you that corrected me on some of my mispronunciations. I think he'll aim it for the near side corner. A little snap. He picks it up on the hop and gets it out of there. He's going to put it that one in the end zone. Touchback to the 20. Touchback, and Bradford will take over first and 10 at their own 20 yard line. So we have a minute four left. I'm just kind of surprised that Hand didn't try to at least get one more first down so they could have worked the clock all the way to zero. Well, well, you're three scores up, so uh, they're in pretty safe position. Yeah, they really are. They really <laughs> are, but... Uh, Branford will milk us last minute here. <laughs> Make it seem like a half an hour up here in the cold. Yeah, they've got a good quarterback there, but uh, Hand has done a good job of containing him tonight. That was a strange-looking play, and it's going <laughs> to lose a couple yards. Yeah, really. Pass is complete or no gain. I mean, that doesn't even add to your uh, yardage. You're <laughs> trying to get to 1,000 yards. I don't really know what they did, you know, as far as Kenny's numbers go tonight. I'm not sure he would have gotten enough offense to get up there, but maybe. There's Kenny going to throw again. Oh, he's, going now he's up the middle, and McMahon, McMahon's got him, and Seth Moe has got him. And that's about the last play of the game. We'll wrap it up quickly from the top of the uh, press box. This is uh, Hand's eighth win of the season. They played 10, they won eight. Play Guilford on Thanksgiving morning. We're down to the last 15 seconds of this game, and that's an incomplete pass. Pass is incomplete. This is uh, Kent Sprague with uh, Frank Torto and John Woods and Steve Fust on the camera. Frank is going to bail out and go down and see if he can interview a few of the seniors immediately after this next 13 seconds to run out. And a very successful season so far, Frank. Very successful indeed, and a lot of fun as usual. And this win and the one last week against Cheshire, uh, not many teams in the state would want to play this hand team right now. That's correct. That's correct. Kenny looking to throw long. There's a long one hung up. And a lot, a lot of people after it. Including uh, Pelletier. And Federico. And Federico. And that's the end of the game. Final score is 17 to nothing. We'll wrap it up from the top of the press box and take it down to the field with Frank.
don't, we don't deserve it. We dropped three balls. Great win tonight, 17 to nothing over Brantford, a very tough and, and uh, stingy Brantford team. Mark, uh, we've got Mark here, one of the co-captains. we also got uh, Shawnee Krieger here. Uh, guys, talk to us a little bit about the rest of the season, but first of all, uh, Mark, what did you find tonight? Uh, I found uh, a tough time in offense. Didn't really get off the ball too well, but uh, got the job done, put 17 points on the board, and got the victory. Well, Just you good. probably didn't know it, but number 34 was uh, marked on you all night long. Oh, yeah. Huh? He's a good player, Kenny. Yeah, he is. He's yeah. a good man out there. Yeah. Okay. Sean, you had an unfortunate year not be able to get out there too much this year, but what are you guys going to be looking at as co-captains for the Guilford game? And we can really now talk without jinxing ourselves, I believe, on the state tournament. Well, I think that... Um, I think they have a great possibility to do that. I think it's it's not an unreal thing. We can we can go out and we can win the championship if we come out and play. We can't come out and do what we did today. We have to come out. Our defense played tremendous today. We have to have our whole team come out and play. And if we do that, I think we have a very good chance. But we got to come out playing every. Well, every that's snap. exactly right. Now, I don't know if you guys weren't playing uh, in '97. You were down the rec leagues, right? Yeah. yeah. So did you go to the state tournament that game? Nope. Yeah, I was nope. there every game. Freezing cold. Let me tell you, that was cold and snowy, but it's a lot of fun to be there. Awesome. Now, Guilford is going to be a challenge, and we can't let them down. We want to beat them, right? Oh, yeah. Guilford's going to come to play us, obviously, Thanksgiving Day. A always, big rival. They always fight us hard no matter what. Yep. Can't underestimate Can't underestimate anybody. Now, why have got you guys introducing the, the – uh, matter of fact, Sean, I'm going to hand the mic over to you. You know, we got some guys here. We talked about him a lot this week and the last couple of weeks. But go ahead, Sean. This is Seth Moe. He plays defensive end. Pete uh, McMahon plays the other defensive end on the on the right side. Steve Ortz, number 90, and Sully, 78. They both play defensive tackle. All right, now look, <laughs> we, we had somebody who won some hamburgers and hot dogs last week, didn't they? Huh? How about, did you share them with the team? Yeah, we're, uh, we're actually going to be having a cookout once we get those. we got about three guys contributing for uh, their player of the game, player of the week. Well, that's right. Nislik got it uh, for a play of the game or something a couple weeks ago, right? Yeah, that's right. Now, what do they tell you about getting that award? When are you getting the hot dogs? Uh, well, the coach has certificates, uh, and he's going to send them in, and we're going to get the hot dogs. Okay, now, now, have you guys been having him take any running lessons once he catches the ball for yardage after a catch? Uh, has anybody trained him on that? Mm, I don't know, maybe a little, a little after school, you know, but, you know, not too much. Okay, now, of the four of you guys here right now, who's the fastest one of foot? Orts. Orts is the fastest one? Okay. Uh, uh, McMahon, tell us a little bit about yourself. We haven't interviewed you this year, but you're, what do you say? What's going on out there from your standpoint? Uh, not much. They were a hard football team today. Uh, we did a real good job on defense. Go stepped it up on offense, but all together, I think we performed pretty well. Guys, the, the pressure, the pressure is phenomenal putting on a quarterback like Kenny out there. Seth Moe, anything at all out there? Um, I don't know. I think you just got to keep pass rushing, just keep, keep learning rush. how to pass rush better. I don't know. I think over the last couple of weeks we learned how to pass rush a little bit more somehow. I just, we we got to keep doing that. It really seems to be telling for all you guys. I really want to thank you for that and say great game, guys, all right? Thank you very much. See you at the food party, okay? All right, everybody. Uh, let's see. What we, let's grab a couple more guys out here. Hey, Andy, Andy. A Andy the Mouth Banish is coming over here. How, doing good? how you doing? Pretty good. Good to see you there. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Yeah. Huh? Uh, yes, sir. Do you want to take the mic in hand? Uh, I'm okay here. I'll let you run this one today. <laughs> well, Andy Banish, everybody out there. He was a little quiet tonight, I thought. He maybe bit. ate too much. Maybe. Too maybe. many ham sandwiches. Too many ham sandwiches. Yes, sir, by golly. <laughs> Let's see. All right, everybody. We, we want to say, okay, 17 Daniel Hanover, Branford. Good night, and see you at Thanksgiving Day.